Welcome to a new Draw My Life video. It all started one night, the night Jeffrey Woods, also known as Jeff the Killer, went completely crazy and killed his parents and his sweet brother Lou Woods. Jeff became a soulless monster whose only desire was to kill. But was Lou really dead after so many cuts and stab wounds? No, Jeff's brother survived this brutal attack. Full of rage, he made it through, eager to live. Then it all turned black and he passed out until the police found him nearly dead, next to his already dead parents. Lou spent some months in a coma in the hospital after many transplants, surgery and stitches, and one day he finally woke up. When he opened his eyes, he thought he saw an angel. It was Susan, the nurse in charge of taking care of him. She got really excited when she saw him. She'd been waiting for him to wake up for a long time. Hi, I'm Susan. I hope you get well soon and wish you the best of luck. She whispered in his ear. Days went by and Susan was always there, taking care of him with a smile on her face. Lou couldn't stop admiring her. He admired the fact that though he wasn't able to talk or even move yet, she was always there for him without losing heart. This gave him the strength to keep on. Without a doubt, Lou was falling in love. What he didn't know was that the pretty nurse had fallen for him as well. After some days, the doctor went into his room and explained the surgery he was about to go through was very delicate, but he trusted him as he was a very strong boy. Then they moved him to the surgery room. The surgeon said, Count to ten, little by little you will start falling asleep and when you wake up you'll feel better than ever. Lou counted peacefully, but when he reached number ten he still felt awake. He wanted to move, but he couldn't. It was as if his body had fallen asleep, but not him. Then he felt a cold knife lying on his chest. The knife started to cut and the pain was almost unbearable and it didn't end. Each cut was more painful than the previous one. He couldn't help but remember Jeff cutting him once and again with his knife, saying, shh, don't worry, go to sleep. When he woke up, the first thing Lou saw was his angel, Susan, with beautiful smile on her face. He felt so happy when he saw her that he was able to say, Hey, Susan, I'm Lou. I hope we can go out together when I'm out of here. She started crying, excited, and accepted without hesitating. Finally, the day came for Lou to recover 100%, and that same night he met Susan. It all went amazing, she was perfect for him. But Lou wasn't over the incident with his brother yet. He felt going back to his old house would help him move on. He was afraid to go on his own though, so he asked Susan if she'd go with him. Of course, Lou, I'd do anything for you. When they got to the house, they found the door had been locked, probably by the police to avoid people breaking in. Together, they pushed it once, twice, three times and the door opened with difficulty. A strong, musty and rotten smell reigned in the house. It was all very dark until little by little the eyes of the couple got used to the darkness and were able to see the horror Jeff had caused. The bodies were gone, however, stains of blood were all around. The house had accumulated a fine and dense layer of dust. For Liu, it was like living again the day his crazy brother went back home. They went upstairs and the closer they got to his room, the worse the scene was. They then got to his room's entrance, surrounded by a police cordon. Liu cut it in silence and opened the door. His room was the worst of all. There was blood everywhere and on the wall at the end of the room they could read the sentence, go to sleep. When he read this, he froze. He suddenly fell onto the floor and started screaming. Ah! He couldn't forget each and every stop from Jeff. Going back to the house had been a bad idea. Lou couldn't stop thinking about his brother. He heard him inside his head. Shh, go to sleep. Jeff, I'll see you in hell when we're both dead. Lou wanted to kill him, stab him over and over again. A strong thirst for death and revenge invaded his body. Lou, hun, are you okay? asked Susan from the stairs. He grabbed a knife from the floor and ran to the door, and there was Susan, with her angel face. 
He was so close to doing something stupid. What had happened to him in that room? He calmed down, and they both left the house together. Susan saw him trembling and scared. I'll take care of you today, she said with her beautiful smile. On their way home, a thief robbed them and stole Susan's purse, hurting her. A huge rage invaded Lou, and he felt like running after the thief. But it wasn't normal rage, no. It was a kind of rage that urged him to kill with his own hands. He wanted to do it with all his strength. He told Susan to go home, he grabbed the knife, and he killed the thief. After stabbing him several times, Lou then realized his thirst for killing was real. He had gone crazy. He thought it wouldn't take long for him to kill again. Nobody would hurt Susan ever again. But he couldn't just go around killing everybody. He wasn't Jeff, so he decided to kill only bad people. Time went by and more and more people had been killed by Lou. He bought a leather suit, so it'd be easier to clean it. He was sick of having blood stains on his clothes. It was a peaceful night, and he went out to a restaurant with Susan to celebrate their anniversary. Lou felt more in love than ever, so he made the most out of the date and asked her to marry him. Obviously, Susan said yes. It all seemed perfect, until on the way out, a damned soul came with a gun and shot. Susan fell on the floor. The ambulance took too long and Susan died. Full of rage, he turned against the doctors in it. If they had been faster, maybe his angel could still be alive. He killed them all, but this didn't heal the pain the death of his loved one was causing. So he grabbed a surgical knife and he cut the shape of a smile on his face and then sewed it so nobody would see he was really suffering inside. Then he sewed the date of Susan's death in his chest, next to his heart, so he'd never forget that this cruel world had taken from him the only thing he loved. From that moment on, Lou Woods is called Homicidal Lou, and he wanders around, killing all people who seems to be happy. If he can't be happy, then nobody should be. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, and if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode!